Greetings fellow dungeon delvers and welcome to Dorans and Dragons, where we work together to come up with Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition builds for your favorite League of Legends champions. Today we're building Yorick, the Shepherd of Souls. Yorick was a denizen of a fishing village on the edge of the Blessed Isles, with the ability to see and hear spirits of the dead who hadn't yet moved on. At first, he was terrified of his power, but soon he realized it was a gift and sought to help those spirits on their path to eternal rest. Word of Yorick and his ability spread beyond his village, and a small monastery of monks invited him to join them and learn how to fully utilize his power. He joined the Brethren of the Dusk and was given a spade and a vial of water from the Sacred Spring. The spade was a representation of their duty to conduct burial rites, and the vial showed their duty to heal the living. One day, while York was out performing his duties, the black mist surged over the Blessed Isles, corrupting everything it touched along the way. York saw his monk brothers get overwhelmed by the mist. They tore their neck vials away, commanded by an unseen voice. As soon as they did, their souls were torn asunder from their bodies and cast away into the mist. York heard the same voice, but he gathered his will and forced himself to ignore it. The effort wore him out and he collapsed. When he awoke, he saw the Blessed Isles had been desecrated to become the Blighted Shadow Isles. The Black Mist now clung to him, attempting to complete York's conversion, but the vial at his neck was too powerful and kept York alive and himself. He also found that he could commune with the mist, to control it and the corpses it left behind. York set off. His goal? To cleanse the Shadow Isles and restore it to its proper beauty and grace. Before we get started with the build, go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button so you're always notified when we release our builds. We'd like to take a minute and thank our awesome patrons over on Patreon who support us every month. Thank you for helping us keep the lights on and the goals fed. If you like our videos and want to support the channel, come join us over on Patreon today for just a dollar to get access to our awesome Discord community where we talk League and D&D all day long. Alright, now let's get into it. Here's a quick preview of the build. For race, we're going with Variant Human. Per usual, our stats are going to be determined using the standard array. For our stat priorities, we're going to max strength and dump dexterity. We do have a multi-class requirement of 13 in strength and wisdom. Our leveling path is going to be two quick levels of fighter, then we'll take a six level dip in cleric, then finish out the build as a fighter. York's passive, Shepherd of Souls, is going to come from Animate Dead. His Q, Last Rites, is going to come from Vampiric Touch, Great Weapon Master, and Touch of Death. Our W, Dark Procession, will be Wall of Sand. His E, Morning Mist, is going to be Chill Touch. And finally we get our ultimate, Eulogy of the Isles, from Summon Undead. For race, we're going with a staple of the channel with Variant Human. Variant Humans get a plus one to two ability scores. We're going to bump our Strength and Wisdom, since there are two main stats. We'll pick up a skill proficiency in history, and then we'll get what we're really here for, which is the free feat. In honor of Pentakill Yorick, we're going to take the Prodigy feat, which is going to give us a skill proficiency, give us expertise in a skill proficiency, and pick a tool to become proficient with as well. Since he uses a base, we're going with Loot, which is the best equivalent in D&D at the moment. Then we'll become proficient in performance, and expertise that as well. With a plus 12 to performance by the end of the game, you'll definitely be rocking their socks off. For background, we're focusing on Yorick's life in the monastery with Acolyte. Acolytes have proficiency and in insight in religion and have the Shelter of the Faithful feature. You'll have to work with your DM a bit, but any other monastery sharing your faith will give you safe harbor and will even perform certain rites and rituals for you. For stats, we're going to attain the balance of life and death that Yorick maintains with the standard array. Roll if you want to, just keep at least a 13 in Strength and Wisdom for multi-classing purposes. We're going to start off with a 15 in Strength for digging our spade into our enemies' skulls, I mean digging graves and performing proper burial rites. Constitution is next for a bit of a beefy health pool. Wisdom after that for both our spellcasting ability and because of his life experience shepherding the dead. Then Charisma for both Intimidation and our musical ability. We'll have average intelligence and dump dexterity since we're a fairly slow juggernaut. For equipment, we're going to give our boy a suit of chainmail for protection, and we're going to go with a great axe for his spade. Now I know that might sound weird, but we pulled up his attack animations, and the slashing damage of the great axe, which can also be used as a shovel, is going to be our closest match. Work with your DM to make it closer to a spade, 
but that's the best weapon conversion in our opinion. Alrighty, let's kick off the build with some levels in Fighter. Fighters have a d10 hit die and give us proficiency with all weapons, all armor types, and shields. We're also going to flex our strength a little more with proficiency in athletics, and we'll take survival as well. First level fighters choose a fighting style to commit to for a passive bonus. We're going with Great Weapon Fighting, which is going to give us a chance to re-roll our Great Axe damage if we roll a 1 or a 2. Our final level 1 fighter feature is Second Wind, which is a bonus action heal you can use once per rest to heal yourself for 1d10 plus your fighter level. Considering we're putting in 14 fighter levels, this is going to be a pretty decent heal for us throughout the duration of this character's life. Also, I forgot to mention this an episode or two ago, and I got some heat for it, but always remember to use this before you spend any hit die on a short rest. Second level fighters gain one of the best features in the game, Action Surge. This is going to let you push yourself to the limit once per rest, to take an additional action on your turn. Now normally, we would pivot from a martial class at level 5 once we got extra attack, but since we've given Yorick a good base for his martial abilities, and Action Surge will give us an extra attack once per rest, we can move over to Cleric to get his ability to command the dead. Clerics have a d8 hit die and give us no new proficiencies. We will choose a Divine Domain to call our own though. We're going to reach into the Dungeon Master's Guide and go with Death Domain. Now before you go racing off to the comments section mutinying about him needing to be a Grave Cleric, let me spare you. Like, spare the dying? Get it? Anywho, none of the Grave Cleric features help us as much as the Death Domain ones do. And we don't get Animate Dead from Grave like we do with Death. Speaking of, choosing the Death Domain is going to give us an expanded spell list which we'll be grabbing our passive and the healing portion of our Q from. And we'll get the Reaper feature, which is going to let us learn the Chill Touch cantrip and let us cast it on two creatures as long as they're within 5 feet of each other. This feature is going to give us the splash potential for our E. Chill Touch lets us create an ethereal skeleton hand and attack with it if we land a spell attack roll. I would just flavor it as a blob of black mist instead. Second level clerics gain their channel to divinity which is going to allow us to channel the power of death using the aptly named Touch of Death. Anytime we hit a creature with a melee attack, we can burn a charge of Channel Divinity to deal 5 plus double our cleric level in necrotic damage. 17 bonus necrotic damage once per rest, which is guaranteed since you already make the hit to trigger this ability, is pretty strong. We'll also gain the turn undead Channel Divinity, which allows us to force a wisdom save on all undead creatures within range making them run away from us for a minute unless it takes some damage. 4th level clerics gain the first ability score improvement of the build. As always, we're going to lay out all of our ability score improvements here so you can pick and choose along the way. At cleric 4, we're going to pick up Warcaster, so we can cast freely and keep our great axe in our hands. It's also going to give us advantage on our concentration saves, which will help maintaining our undead army. And finally, if someone provokes an opportunity attack from us, we can hit them with a spell instead of an attack if we want to. At Fighter 4, we're going to amp up our damage quite a bit with Great Weapon Master. This is going to let us take a minus 5 to our hit roll to give us 10 guaranteed damage if we still land the strike. Additionally, if we kill a creature or land a crit, we can make another Great X attack as a bonus action. At Fighter 6, we're going to drastically bump our health pool with a tough feat, giving us 2 extra hit points per character level. At Fighter 8 and 12, we'll bump our strength up 2 points each, maxing it at Fighter 12. And finally at Fighter 14, we'll bump our Wisdom 2 points for better spell attack rolls and saves on our Cleric spells. Level 5 Clerics upgrade Turn Undead to Destroy Undead. Meaning instead of being turned from you by your Turn Undead, if an Undead creature has a CR of 1 half or lower, they are instantly destroyed. This is how you use the power of the Black Mist to take back the Blessed Isles. We'll also learn 3rd level spells and pick up the heal on our Q and our passive with Vampiric Touch and Animate Dead respectively. Vampiric Touch is going to wreathe our hand in the Black Mist and let us make a melee spell attack roll to deal 3d6 necrotic damage, healing us for half of the damage dealt. This persists and can be done as our action each turn until the spell ends. Animate Dead is going to let us raise up our ghouls as zombies or skeletons depending on the corpse pile we work with. You'll have it for 24 hours and can maintain the control for another 24 hours 
by simply casting the spell again. Six level Death Domain Clerics gain the Inescapable Destruction feature, which is going to allow all of our Cleric spells and our Channel Divinity to ignore resistances to necrotic damage. Immunities are still in play however, so keep that in mind. We'll also gain a second charge of our Channel Divinity, so you get to be a little more liberal with your death touching. And we're back over to Fighter. Level 3 Fighters choose their Martial Archetype to focus in on. We're going to blend Magic and Might with the Eldritch Knight. Eldritch Knights gain Weapon Bond and Spellcasting. Now we don't quite have any spells worth mentioning at this point, but we will down at Fighter level 13. Feel free to throw in a Firebolt for Ignite or anything else that will add some oomph to your kit at this point as filler until we get there. Weapon Bond is going to let us connect to our spade magically, stopping anyone from disarming us and allowing us to use a bonus action to teleport it to our hand. Level 5 Fighters get Extra Attack, letting us attack twice whenever we take the attack action. Don't forget about Great Weapon Master giving us all that extra damage. Level 7 Eldritch Knights gain War Magic, letting us make a Great Axe attack as a bonus action anytime we use a cantrip for our main action. So hit your enemies with a Chill Touch for your action and charge up there and smash them with your spade as a bonus action. Level 9 Fighters pick up the Indomitable Feat, which is going to give us a second chance once per long rest to re-roll a saving throw when we fail it. I can't tell you how many times this has saved me or my players, so don't forget about it. 10th level Eldritch Knights learn Eldritch Strike. Now when we hit a creature with our spade, it has disadvantage on the next spell saving throw we make against it before the end of your next turn. Make sure you take the Toll the Dead once you get this feature, so you can take advantage of your enemy's disadvantage. Level 11 fighters get a boost to their extra attack, giving them 3 attacks per attack action instead of just 2. With Action Surge and Great Weapon Master, we'll have a floor of 96 slashing damage, with a potential for 162, and that doesn't include any crits either. Level 13 Eldritch Knights learn 3rd level spells. We're going to pick up our W and Ultimate with Wall of Sand and summon Undead. Wall of Sand is going to have to be flavored a little differently obviously, perhaps as a swarming wall of corpses? You conjure the wall 30 foot long, 10 foot high, and 10 foot thick, and any creature has to spend triple movement in its space and is blinded until it exits the wall's space. Summon Undead is going to call an Undead Spirit, who we're going to flavor as the Maiden of the Mist. The stat block is listed with the spell, but you'll be using the Deathly Touch Ghost variant, which works just like how the Maiden curls up close to you and starts yoinking away your life. Alright, now that we've completed the build, let's see how we did. First the good. It's spooky season and we got our favorite Grave Tender built. Wait, that has nothing to do with the build. Sorry, I think my wife slipped me something pumpkin spice during this. For real though, we got the perfect balance of necromantic powers and super strong smashy spade guy. It's going to be awesome strolling into battle with your four goals and maiden right by your side waiting for your commands. For the bad, there's a little bit of a summons dependency, meaning if there's no corpses around, no goals. And according to Slicksick, he's a little feet heavy. So what'd you think? I've included a link to this build via D&D Beyond in the description below as well as Amazon links to the books used in the build. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. We have a few awesome rewards and you get access to our great Discord community. We plan on churning out one league champion build every week. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll catch you on the Rift, or in the Forgotten Realms.